Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. I want to say congratulations on taking this big step toward home ownership. It is really a big deal and you are to be um, commended for learning about the process because as you have probably have uh, learned by now, there's a lot of different moving parts to it. My name is Mickey Dollins. I am an independent insurance agent. I have an office uh, near the state capitol and I represent a lot of different insurance companies. And by represent, I mean I work through them for my clients. I'm a broker, so uh, I feel like I add value in terms of choice and options for clients. But in today's presentation, I'm going to explain the more um, minute details when it comes to homeowners insurance that I think everyone should know. Um, we will get started. And uh, if you're watching this, it's a, it's a recorded, video and uh, but I am accessible. You can contact me on the uh, information provided in the chat box. You can shoot me an email. Uh, you can call my you can Google Mickey Dollins insurance and my phone number and address will show up. If you have any insurance questions going forward, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd be more than happy to help. So there are different types of homeowners insurance, or there's just different types of insurance in general. So there's flood, a special hazard, we'll talk about that. There's mortgage life insurance, but today for today's presentation, we're gonna discuss hazard or homeowners insurance. When you hear those two terms, it's the same thing. Home insurance, hazard, that's what you need in order to close on a loan. Uh, that's what the lending institution is going to require. If you're buying your home cash, you're not required to have homeowner's insurance, but you'd be very smart to do so. So insurance, I think we're all pretty familiar with insurance, but what exactly is it? What does it do? Um, with our car insurance, we use it to protect ourselves and the people that who are driving um, and our personal property, things in the vehicle, the vehicle itself. The same applies to a home. For homeowner's insurance, it's going to protect one of the largest assets that you've invested in your home. Not only that, but the things inside of it, um, the things outside of it, like a fence or a shed, a playground, that type of thing. And then also your personal property, cooking wear, technology, all of that, clothes, um, everything inside is also covered under homeowner's insurance. And we'll get more into that as we go along. So in, insurance is super important for many of the points that I just mentioned. But um, it's also required if you're getting a conventional loan, FHA, USDA, VA loan. You got to have homeowners insurance because the bank wants to protect its, protect its collateral, which is the property itself. So the uh, slide here says, why is insurance important? Um, risk analysis. It's what insurance companies use to determine whether or not to offer you insurance coverage and at what price. There's a lot of different factors that go into the determination of whether or not an insurance company will cover someone. Uh, one of the main factors I see is the age of the roof, the age of the home, whether or not plumbing or heating or electrical have been updated. Those aren't, you know, do or die factors. It's not going to break a deal, but those are determined in the overall premium of the home. Okay, it says, what are the risk factors? There are different types. I just mentioned some of them right off the bat. Um, personal property, electronics, furniture, cooking utensils, um, you know, credit rating. Sometimes when an uh, insurance company will look at the risk factors, they'll use your uh, social, but that doesn't go, it's not going to negatively affect your credit score. It's a soft hit, so that means it's not going to affect it. If any insurance agent asks you for that, they're just wanting to get a better assessment, and sometimes that can save you money. Um, pools are a really big one, even hot tubs, which aren't listed on here. Uh, whether or not it has a fence or a gate around the pool. Uh, what kind of dogs you have. Pets is a big one. You know, If you have exotic animals at your house, they're going to find out, and they're going to want to <laughs> up your insurance coverage. Even certain types of breeds of dogs will be cost more uh, determined based on what kind of breed that is. Obviously, square footage is going to make a big difference. The larger the home, the more square feet there are to cover, and uh, that's going to be a higher premium. Um, and whether or not there's a business in your house. So as you can see from these different risk factors, there's a whole heck of a lot, plus a handful of more 
that uh, data uses to determine the risk of a particular borrower. Now, what I like to do is when I take this information in a discovery call, I'll oftentimes run the quote through one of the spouses if they're married, and then I'll do I'll flip the primary insured to the other spouse. And sometimes um, it can be quite a significant savings determined based off of who is going to be the primary insured. But again, that a lot of different factors go into that, and the factors vary from insurance company to insurance company. Why do you need homeowner's insurance? Your home, like I said, is one of the largest investments that you're gonna make. You wanna make sure it's protected. You also wanna make sure that you have homeowner's insurance because a lending institution is gonna require it. And I think I've hit on that a couple of times now, but just to preface all of the presentation, that's why homeowner's insurance is so important because it is such a valuable asset. What does a basic home insurance cover? So. When going into home insurance policies, I would recommend you get what, you, what is called an HO3 policy, a homeowner's three policy. It's the most comprehensive open peril policy. It's gonna cover the most perils. And we'll get, we'll get to perils slash hazards in just a little bit. But for right now, typically, if you were to get a quote, it would say coverage A, coverage B, and so on. And we're gonna go line by line and talk about what each of those coverages entails. So coverage A is dwelling, coverage that protects the structure of the home. That's the roof, the walls, the frame. Basically, if you could take everything out of the house, you take the roof off, you shake everything out, you take everything out, everything that falls out would be your personal property, and then the home itself is the dwelling. Now, oftentimes the dwelling is gonna come in, the replacement cost for the home, the dwelling, is going to come in at a higher amount than the market price of the home. That's because if there was a total loss, then the insurance company would pay for brand new materials, brand new labor, and they would also pay to remove all of that existing debris to rebuild the new home. So with inflation, the replacement cost is gonna typically be higher. For example, someone buys a home for 250000 I present them a quote that says $320,000 in replacement cost. And they'll be like, whoa, well, this is way over the amount that we're paying. And I'll say, yes, but your home was built in 2002, 20 years ago. So that has depreciation factored into the market value. To build a brand new home would be the replacement cost. And once they understand that, then we're on the same page. Okay, and then going down to coverage B is other structures. Other structures are sheds, fences, even the driveway and little walkway that leads up to the patio. It could be um, you know, playground, things outside of the home. Uh, the definition here says coverage for sheds, detached garages, carports would be one of them, and other structures not connected to the main dwelling itself. Now that's typically a percentage of what that co coverage A would be. Sometimes it's 25%, it could be 50%. It really just determines, uh, it's based off of what kind of other structures you have. You may not have a shed, you may not have a, another building, in which case it can be a little bit lower. It's good to work with an insurance agent because if you do build a house, you, if you do build a, a structure like a shed or you, a playground, you can always call your insurance agent and say, hey, I need to get a little additional coverage here if you think you need it. The next coverage is coverage C. It's personal property. Earlier, I alluded to an illustration where you take the roof off and shake everything out and everything that falls out is your personal property. And so clothing, furniture, appliances, computers. Now, the good thing about homeowner's insurance is that it actually follows your property outside of the home. Let's say you have a laptop, you take it in your car and it gets stolen. You can file an insurance claim. Uh, it would be under a, all other perils, usually about a thousand bucks for the deductible. And then they would pay the rest of that up to about 2,500 bucks. Now, if you had, for example, in this case, I'm just using a article of personal property as a computer. If you had a computer that was worth more than 2,500, you could put an endorsement on that particular item, in which case your homeowner's insurance would cover the full cost. But we'll get to endorsements in just a little bit. Coverage D is loss of use. This is, for example, if you, someone were unfortunate to have to leave their home because of a covered peril caused the home to be uninhabitable, and they needed to go to an apartment or a hotel. 
Well, while the repairs were being made, the insurance company will pay for you and your whoever dependents, whoever lives with you, or just maybe you, to stay in a apartment. Or if it's a really long-term repair, they'll pay for you to stay in a in a rental home. And so that's really important. And then once the repairs are moved in and the house is deemed safe again and, and usable, you can move it back into your home. But this is just basically coverage to get you by while repairs are being made and it's unsafe to live in the dwelling itself. Um, so, and then the next one is personal liability. This is usually um, anywhere from 200, 300, 500,000. I would recommend doing 500,000 on this because in today's sue happy world, people are suing everyone for anything. And it's better to have that $500,000 in personal liability. And you'd be like, wow, that sounds like a lot of money. Well, when you add up court costs, lawyer fees, and everything else that goes with the judicial system and how much that can cost, it really adds up. And really the difference between having $300,000 in personal liability and $500,000 is about a dollar a month. It's just about a $12 increase on mo most insurance uh, annual premium. So it's really important to, to raise that up to 500,000 and many clients will even choose to get an umbrella policy, which for about 200 bucks a year, will get you an additional $1 million in personal liability insurance that not only extends to your home, but your auto as well. Okay, and then the next one is medical payments. This is a good one to have that will keep people out of court. Let's say, for example, someone were to be walking down the street, they uh, trip on a root in your yard, and then they say that you created a hazard and they're gonna sue you. Well, the first thing your insurance company will do is like, we'll take care of the stitches, we'll take care of your medical bills. And if usually that will resolve the issue and the person will say, okay, thank you very much, we're good here. If they don't and they wanna sue, they're not gonna be taking money out of your pocket. Your insurance company will kick in and they will pay for the litigation if that person decides to choose uh, to sue you. So medical payments is kind of a first stop option and then if that doesn't work then um, if you un if, if it's an unfortunate enough situation have to go to court your personal liability would kick in and now i mentioned earlier additional coverages um, i think i called it an endorsement and these can apply to things that have underlying limits like uh, computers guns expensive handbags furs Typically, um, it varies from insurance company to insurance company, but from what I usually see, it's about $2,500. If you have more than $2,500 in guns, in camcorders, in electronics, you would want to let your agent know and they could put a uh, endorsement on each of those. Now, it's not $2,500 spread out across all these items. It's per item. So you would have $2,500 in coverage for your guns, $2,500 in coverage for your personal prop, I mean, for your for your computers, your business property. But um, when I say 2,500, keep in mind that's just an example. Each um, insurance company is a little bit different. I've seen some uh, cover up to 1,800, some cover up to 3,500. You just want to be sure that you're clear on uh, what the underlying limits are for um, additional coverage items like the ones listed here. And then earlier I mentioned a hazard and apparel. That's uh, what you are covered under with an HO3 policy, an open peril policy. That means you're covered for the most comprehensive perils available. Now there's a handful of things that you are not covered for under um, even the best homeowners policy. And we'll get to that in the next slide. But for right now, some of the most common uh, perils are dog bites, fire, lightning, windstorm, and here in Oklahoma means the same thing as tornado. Hail is very popular. Some of the ones that maybe aren't, but you're still covered under is explosions and riot and civil commotion, impact from aircraft, right? And smoke, vandalism, malicious mischief. Uh, and then you, it goes on and on. Theft, falling objects, weight of ice and snow. A lot of people had damages from that a couple years ago. Accidental overflow of water from plumbing. Uh, if you have a kid like me who likes to put Hot Wheels in the toilet, he's a little bit older now. He's about to, my son's about to turn four. I've got a daughter who's three, about to turn three. She's two and a half. If they ever put like a Hot Wheel down the toilet and cause a flood, uh, cause a backup, your insurance will cover that as long as you have that overflow water backup coverage, which is very worth it. And it's very reasonably priced. Now I want to talk about that last bullet point down there, accidental electrical damage to appliances. 
Now, your appliances aren't covered under a traditional homeowner's insurance policy. That would be like a homeowner's warranty. Think of warranty as like a home or Home Depot or Lowe's warranty on an appliance that extends for a year or two. That's not what a homeowner's insurance is. Now, you can get a home warranty to do that, to extend the coverages on your appliances. But homeowner's insurance will not protect against anything that has just, you know, run out of steam, like a broken motor, unless it was caused by a one of these perils. For example, if your refrigerator stopped working because lightning struck your home and caused a power surge and caused it to go out, that would be covered. If your microwave was on the ground and you had overflow of water and I'm just this is a crazy example and then it ruined your microwave that would be covered because the cause of the damage was a covered peril now if you over three months notice you have black mold in your bathroom as that resulted from lack of maintenance and lack of cleaning that's not a covered peril if there was a leaky pipe in your um, behind your wall that was caused from a specific date like a uh, frozen you know maybe it, it was frozen and busted and you could you could show without a doubt it was caused by that event that would be covered you just have to trace it back to a singular event that is a covered peril that caused the damage and you'll be good what is not covered by standard homeowners insurance flood Flood is different from water overflow. We're talking natural flood from the, from the weather, from the clouds. That is available, but that is in a separate policy. Now, if your home is in a flood zone, you are required to have flood insurance. So be sure to ask your realtor this. Be sure to ask your loan officer, your insurance agent, hey, am I in a flood zone? Keep in mind, technically everywhere is a flood zone. The only people who aren't required to have an additional flood insurance policy or a flood insurance policy are those people in a low risk flood zone, which is indicated by the letter X. If you're in a letter A, E, A, those are all flood zones. You have to have flood insurance. Um, you are not covered under earthquake that there is coverage for earthquake. Um, it's pretty rare. The tricky thing about earthquake insurance is you have to prove that the crack in your foundation or your wall was caused by an earthquake. And that would be incumbent upon you to basically show the date that the crack happened and the deductibles are super high on that. So I haven't sold much earthquake insurance at all because it is so strenuous to be able to prove one, the earthquake caused the damage and then two, the deductibles are just high across the stand. It's just standard across the board, high deductibles. Acts of war, nuclear detonation, damage resulting from lack of maintenance. Lack of maintenance I mentioned earlier, not taking care of your stuff is not a covered peril. Um, and then home insurance is not a home warranty. That's to reiterate that there's a difference. The home warranty is like the Home Depot, the Lowe's in, uh, warranty on appliances from malfunction. Um, home insurance will protect your home uh, and appliances from things like, such as a covered peril, such as a lightning strike or uh, smoke damage, that type of thing. Deductibles. All right. So deductibles are what you have to pay out of pocket when you make a claim. Let's say you get hit by hail and you've got a 1% deductible on your dwelling that's covered at $100,000. That means you'd be paying a thousand bucks out of pocket and then the insurance company would pay for the rest. Um, a typical deductible for wind and hail, tornado and hail, is typically 1% or 2%. And you may be like, a percent of what? That coverage A. Go back to coverage A, $100,000 in coverage for your dwelling. That's very low. I'm just using that for an easy example. 1% of 100000 is a thousand bucks. That's what you'd be paying out of pocket to get a, say, a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar roof replaced. Now you may say, "Hey, I don't have a thousand dollars out of pocket. Uh, how am I going to do that?" Well, a lot of insurance companies will say, "Okay, the cost to fix this roof is fifteen thousand dollars. You've got a thousand dollar deductible. Here's a check for fourteen thousand. 
that's when you can go out and sometimes you can pick your own roofer and they may do the whole roof for 13 grand okay and so you can you can work there so uh, that's nice when they just take your deductible out of the settlement check okay one two percent three percent if you have debt to income issues which your loan officer will probably tell you if you do you may have to go up to three percent but just keep in mind that the higher percentage the higher deductibles you have the lower premium you'll have but if you need it it's going to be very expensive out of pocket you may end up having to pay out of pocket if your deductibles are too too um too high so but then on the flip side the lower the deductibles usually the higher insurance premiums so you have to find that kind of like sweet spot which is usually one to two percent on wind and hail and now all other perils all these other perils that i mentioned um, earlier um, those are um, those are going to be the all other perils anything that's not wind and hail is typically going to be a thousand dollar deductible now, when you have the opportunity to choose actual cash value um, or replacement cost value, it is best to go with replacement cost value. And here's why. Actual cash value will cover your personal property and your roof with depreciation added in. So what is depreciation? It factors in the age of the item, the market value, the condition of the property at the time of loss. Now, why would anyone choose that? Because having an actual cash value, um, choosing that ACV is going to be a cheaper policy, but when you need it, it's gonna cost you more in the long run. So for example, let's say you've got a, a piece, uh, you, you have a dining room table and you paid uh, $10,000, well, let's say you paid $1,000 for it five years ago. And uh, it gets ruined in a, a like, let, let's say uh, in a tornado. And you say, hey, this $5,000 table, uh, I need to be reimbursed for it. And they'll say, well, yeah, that cost 5,000 back then. Since then you've eaten on the table every night, it's been you know, drawn on by the kids, it's worth a thousand bucks now. And they give you a thousand dollars, okay? You'd be like, wow, I'm, I'm out four grand. Well, they, they factored in depreciation in that. So on the flip side, if you have replacement cost value, They'll say, yeah, you paid $5,000 for that table five years ago, a thousand bucks for that table five years ago. Nowadays, through like going on like Wayfair or wherever you bought it and get that same or as close to the same table as possible, it's likely the price has gone up. If you have replacement cost coverage, they're going to pay for that full replacement cost to that full value. So you're going to get a brand new table and not have to pay anything and not have to factor in any depreciation. Um, this also applies to your roof, your fence, flooring, settlement, um, and by settlement, I mean like the type of flooring you have. So the value proposition of decision making, you've got a lot of different uh, factors here. You know, do you want someone who's local, someone who is accessible via text? Maybe you like to just do it all yourself on online and uh, that, that's totally a, an option full service agency, you may want to bundle your home, your auto, your life insurance, all of that is also something to, to consider. So uh, a good question I get from quite a few people is when do I start shopping for insurance? So you've been uh, approved for your loan, you've talked to your realtor, you've made an offer on a house, it looks like it's going to go through, you've got a closing date. One of those little check marks you got to check off that your loan officer gives you is you need homeowner's insurance. You need a uh, proof of insurance. That's about the time you start getting insurance quotes as uh, soon as your contract to purchase is accepted. And it's good to uh, shop out different insurance agents, you know, pick someone you feel confident in, pick someone who is accessible, someone who is um, going to be there when you need them. All right. So right here, we're at the knowledge check. Um, number one says, what is not covered by standard home insurance? You've got a whole bunch of perils, and then you got a whole that are covered, and then you got a handful of perils that aren't covered. Okay, go ahead and answer that. Number two, who is responsible for the insurance deductible? You got to make a claim. Your claim is approved. They send you a settlement check. Um, who's paying that deductible? Okay. On number one, what is not covered by standard home insurance? We've got flood, earthquake, acts of war, that type of thing. 
Um, who is responsible for the insurance deductible? The homeowner policy, the policy holder. Yep, the homeowner is. All right, everyone, at this point, you can ask your presenter questions and they will answer. If you have specific questions for me, please reach out to me on the information provided. You can see my email there. I do my best to try to get back to everyone within 24 hours. I really appreciate you giving me time to present. Um, I enjoy this. I used to be a teacher and uh, I've, always enjoyed, I've always enjoyed education. And I uh, just want to congratulate again on taking this huge step toward building a future for yourself and generations to come, investing in yourself and building equity. It's one of the very best investments you can make. And I'm here for you. If you ever need me, feel free to reach out. And I appreciate your time and attention and I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.